Let's have a walk back into my garden and think about the system's view of life. Over the next few weeks, we'll begin to take plants apart. We'll look at their interrelated pieces, the cells, the so-called building blocks, and the roots, the stems, and the leaves, all of which you can find here in my garden. This is a very common approach to studying plant biology, and useful in many ways. The danger is, however, that it may appear that somehow these pieces are separate from each other, or even worse, we may begin to look at the plant or other living systems as machines. Certainly, these tomatoes we're looking at here are alive and not machines. Plants are alive, machines are not. Have a look at this um, squash plant here, zucchini. We'll see if we can get a close look, closer look at the uh, fruit. Plants can replicate themselves through seeds and fruits. They grow, they change. Machines do not. Nevertheless, this so-called mechanistic view of the world is so common as to be almost unquestioned. It is seen in one of the most destructive forms in human medicine, when specialists don't talk to each other when they're considering a whole person's being, but only treat a particular specialty. This can result in people receiving medication or treatment for one illness that makes another worse. Here we've got some tomatoes growing, a little bit of pepper going, some eggplants each one of them a living system all in itself. This understanding, however, of the world as a machine is a manifestation of a Cartesian worldview most closely associated with Descartes that separated the body and the mind, the family from the society, the roots from the stems, from the leaves. The so-called clockwork universe gives us a false view of life. Today I want to share with you an understanding of life, particularly plant life, but really all of life that is based on the system's view of the world. Have a look at the bee bomb while we're going by. These plants uh, are just loved by hummingbirds. They're also used for um, tea. It was actually called Patriot's Tea back in, during the Revolutionary War because uh, the, the leaves could be used to make tea. Anyway, I'll share with you the system's view of life using a movie called Mind Walk based on the book by Friedhof Capra called The Turning Point. In this movie there are three characters who we'll meet in a few minutes. Sam Waterman plays Jack the Senator from the US, John Hurd plays Thomas the Poet and Jack's friend, and Lee Ullman plays Sonia, the disenchanted physicist who has taken time away from her work to think about the world. The scene is Mont St. Michael, a castle on the shoreline of France. The first scene will have our friends viewing an ancient clock. Let's go have a look. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This thing has been functioning for hundreds, hundreds of years. Since before the beginning of modern times. Yeah, but this is different from the kind of time you were talking about before. Sunrise to sunset, Sabbath to Sabbath, isn't it? This is, uh... This is mechanical time, isn't it? You bet. You bet it is. You bet. I sometimes think that this clock, this machine, is what constitutes humanity's first real break from the world of nature. Wouldn't you say so? Hello? The clock did much more than that. It became the model of the cosmos. And then they mistook the model for the real thing. People got the idea that nature was just a giant clock, not a living organism, but a machine. That's exactly what I've been trying to tell this lunkhead. Exactly, word for word. Maybe you recognize him. Jack Edwards, and you're? Uh, Sonia Hoffman. I think I've heard your name somewhere. Yeah, maybe in a couple of hundred news broadcasts. He was a candidate for the U.S. presidency in the primaries. Oh, I vaguely remember. See, I'm not a voter. Most Americans don't vote either. I do know who you are. Me? You know who I am? I doubt it. I... You're Thomas Harriman, the poet. Well, yes, I am, but uh, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You recognize me, a poet whose latest work sold all of 12,000 copies, but you do not recognize this gentleman who uh, was a presidential candidate in America? My God, woman, what's happened to your values? What do you do? I'm a scientist, and we do occasionally read poetry. As a matter of fact, I'm doing a lot of it these days. I'm on a sort of sabbatical. I'm an ex-physicist, an ex-American resident, an ex-voter. Ex-wife? 
This is very upsetting. Why don't intelligent people like yourself bother to vote? Oh, forgive me, you politicians make it so hard. Uh, the ideas expressed by most of you, right and left, seem to me as antique and mechanical as that old clock. What's that supposed to mean? Well, if I was to explain that, I'd have to go all the way back to Descartes, if you remember him. Yeah. To be or not to be? I think, therefore, I am. Yeah, well, we both went to college, yeah. Well, Descartes was the primary architect of the view that sees the world as a clock. A mechanistic view that still dominates most of the world today, and it seems to me, especially you politicians. Mechanistic? Is that a real word? Mechanistic? Mechanical? Mechanics? Yeah, it's a good word. Mechanistic, as if nature functions like a clock. You take it apart, reduce it to a number of small, simple pieces, easy to understand, analyze them, put them all back together again, and then you understand the whole. Isn't that what's known as scientific thinking, Miss Hoffman? Really, what you call the mechanistic view, isn't that what the scientific method's all about? Is it? Well, I don't think so, but I'd like to kind of hear from the physicist, Jack. All right, I'm sorry. Please continue. Well, you're right in a way, Mr. Um... Jack, call me Jack. <laughs> okay, Jack, you are right in a sense. But it wasn't always so, not before the cart. When he introduced such thinking, it amounted to a revolutionary break with the church. He said, I don't need the Pope to tell me how the world functions. I can find that out for myself. Because to me, the world is just a machine. And then he became fascinated with clockworks and made the clock into a central metaphor. He said, I consider the human body as nothing but a machine. A healthy man is like a well-made clock. A sick man is like an ill-made clock. Well, the metaphor seems a little clumsy now, but it worked, didn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah, so successfully that Scientists came to believe that all living things, plants, animals, us, are nothing but machines. And that's the fallacy. It carried over into everything, arts, politics. I don't know, it seems to me that most people don't even remember who Descartes was. I'm sorry, I guess I just don't follow you. But he'd like to. If you could just break it down into 30 second media bites, that's more what he's used to. Very funny. All right, what is it that I don't recognize? What's so bad about Descartes? But there's nothing bad about Descartes. In fact, I think Descartes is wonderful. He was a godsend to the 17th century. But times have changed since then. We need a new way of understanding life. But that pendulum, for example, has long since been replaced by a tiny quartz crystal. And these magnificent hand-forged wheels <laughs> turned into a microchip the, the size of my thumbnail. That's how far modern science has left mechanistic thinking behind. But you politicians, you seem to have that clockwork still ticking in your head. So Sonia tells us we need to understand the relationships among the parts. And Jack says, how can you understand the, uh, a tree without understanding its roots and stems and its leaves as we walk into my greenhouse and have a look at some roots, stems, and leaves. You know, we need to understand the organisms at the lowest, the smallest level of complexity. Protons, neutrons, electrons, right up to the largest. The whole universe. And we need to be able to place organisms like plants huh, and people within this hierarchy of increasing complexity. We need a model to understand not only the roots, stems, and leaves, but their relationship to each other as well as the larger universe.